Und die First Stop, das ist die Uniform. How did you start? Who was your teachers? And, 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 and who did you teach? Because three days ago you were former PhD student received Nobel Prize in So this is a great place for producing Nobel Prize. And I have a question on that. Thank Please. you very much, Nicola. You know, perhaps I say a few words about my beginning in, in education. Yeah. You know, first, first important point, uh, my parents were very concerned with the education of their children. Uh, at that time, we had no TV at home. Uh, when I was coming back from school, my father and my mother were asking me, what, what did you do this morning or this afternoon? And they were really concerned by, by what I was studying. And that was very important for me because it was a great encouragement to see my family uh, taking care of what I was doing at school. And also, I had excellent, excellent high school teachers. Very good. You know, in France, uh, after the high school system, when you finish your school and you have the baccalaureate, uh, you don't go necessarily to the university. We have in France a system called Grande École, where we have uh, the equivalent of undergraduate, university, but very high training. I would say, for example, 18 hours of mathematics a week. Very strong mathematics teaching, physics, chemistry, during two years, very intense training. And then after these two years, we have a series of competitions for uh, engineer school, research school, very competitive. Uh, like Ecole Polytechnique, Ecole Normale, very advanced studies uh, institution. And uh, for example, Ecole Normale, there are about, uh, I don't know, 700 or 800 people, students competing, and only uh, 30 are admitted. Very, very selective process. So uh, in 1953, I was admitted at Ecole Normale Supérieure. So I was doing my high school in Algiers, which was at that time part of a French colony, so it, the education system in Algiers was completely French education. So when I was admitted to Ecole Normale Superior, I left Algiers and I went to Paris, where I spent uh, four years, which is equivalent of uh, master and graduate. Very, very good, very good school, where we had in that school the best mathematician of France and also the best physicists. When I entered the Normale, I was planning to do mathematics, because I like mathematics very much. But I followed lectures, and one of the physics professors, Alfred Kessler, was giving fantastic lectures. He was charismatic, very clear, and very kind with the students. So, he was explaining atomic system, light, and I was so much interested that I decided to switch from mathematics to physics. And I joined Kassler Group. Okay, but you see, I tell this story because I think it's important to meet people when you are in your education system, the family, the high school teacher, the university teachers, which attract you, which give you passion for studying and for research. That's the most important thing. I think when you start doing research, you need to be excited. It's not a job, it's a passion. And Kessler was able to transmit this passion to, to his children. So that was the beginning. And then, <coughs> Yeah, and... Uh... Возможно, вы расскажете... Окей, okay. I will tell in Russian and then in English. Uh, возможно, вы расскажете немножко больше о uh, том, кто были ваши ученики, и о том, что профессор Кастер впоследствии получил Нобелевскую премию тоже. Probably you tell a little bit more about your uh, teacher Kastler, who also received a Nobel Prize after that. And about your PhD students. 
many of them also became famous in physics in, in various fields, and uh, even one of them received also Nobel Prize. So this means that the educational system at uh, uh, your laboratory is a really top level, world level system, which produces top level researchers, including Nobel Prize. So, uh, you know, when I entered the lab of Professor Kassler, it was in 1956. Uh, this lab was existing only for four years. You know, after World War II, the French university system was very bad, in bad shape. Everything was destroyed, and there was no money for starting again. It was a very bad situation. And uh, there were uh, a few people, uh, like Kastler, like Rosset, who was the first student, uh, like Jacques Friedel in solid state physics, like Anatole Abraham in nuclear magnetic resonance, who went to the United States or to England to, to do PhD and to learn modern research. And also, uh, perhaps you know the name of Messia, uh, who wrote uh, the famous book on quantum mechanics. Messia was just coming back from the United States, from Rochester, and he started to give lectures in physics also, in modern physics, because quantum mechanics was not taught at the university. <coughs> and we had also in France a summer school at Les Ouches in the arts. That was a very uh, exciting institution because it was in the art in the mountain, you know, beautiful landscape, very rough comfort, very small houses in wood. And uh, about 50 students, half from France and half from all over the world, were coming every year in July and August, two months, to follow lectures given by the best physicists of the time. Feynman, Schwinger, Pauli, it's a fantastic lecture. So I went there in 1955. <coughs> I spent two months there, working very hard all the day, and learning modern physics, statistical physics, quantum mechanics. And that was a push, uh, a great boom for most French physicians. And all the, of the people who got the Nobel Prize, like Pierre Chibouchel, all made their training in the to learn modern physics. So we started, the lab was very small, a few, five people doing the idea of diploma, working until yesterday, and uh, the group started very fast, and uh, some interesting results were obtained in optical pumping. And progressively, the best students from Economa were attracted, coming there to make a diploma and PhD. And the number of results increased in, in an important way. And Kassler got the Nobel Prize in 1966 for the discovery of optical pumping. That was a great encouragement for, for, for the lab working very hard and, uh, you know, uh, I think it's important, at least in my opinion, uh, when you start doing research to be in a place where you consider research as a long-term effort. To produce something which is worthwhile, you need to work for a long time. And you need to have a good atmosphere around you. And that has been created by the personality of the founders of the lab, which were Alfred Kassler and Jean Bosset. And, and, you know, and uh, also the education system in France was improved dramatically. Uh, quantum mechanics was taught at university. And in fact, during four years, uh, in five years, I taught quantum mechanics at the university. And with two colleagues, we wrote a book on quantum mechanics. Perhaps you know it. So those of you who are doing physics, because I think it has been translated in Russia. And then we started to, to make uh, 
graduate courses, we learn modern physics, the Jesus summer school continued, and we had, uh, I started my group, my research group in 1963, after finishing my PhD. And I got students, and the second PhD student I had was Serge Laroche, who worked with me during five years to do his PhD, very bright student, enthusiastic, and I was so happy uh, two days ago, three days ago, to learn that he got the Nobel Prize in Physics of 2012. So in our lab, there have been three Nobel Prize, uh, three generations of Nobel Prize, which shows that uh, when you invest in research, you make good students, you make them enthusiastic about research, then that you can get on the Many thanks. Uh, I guess now we can switch on to questions from the Сейчас мы можем приступить, наверное, мне кажется, к вопросам аудитории. Вы примерно представляете, какова была карьера профессора Коинтоночи, в какой атмосфере он работал и работает, и что вот эта система образования и науки, которая сложилась у них в университете и в лаборатории, приводит к высочайшему результату мирового уровня, вот видите, три Нобелевских лауреата, упоминались другие имена, например, Абрахам, он получил Нобелевскую премию за магнитный резонанс, хотя он и не работал в лаборатории, но он из этой лаборатории, и целый ряд других имен, ребят, которые ушли, потом получили Нобелевские призы. Так что это целая плеяда, целая генерация таких замечательных ученых. Значит, вопросы, я повторяю, на любую тему могут быть по науке, поскольку он сам занимается квантовой оптикой, имеющие отношение к квантовой информации, естественно, и с квантовой физикой, связанной с отдельными атомами, с фотонами, частично за это премию получил его ученик Серж Хорош несколько дней назад. И вообще шарик образован человек, можете спрашивать о чем угодно. Например, для меня было интересно узнать, как он воспринял получение Нобелевской премии, как это вообще произошло. Кстати, человек живет жизнью вдруг бах, и Нобелевский говорит, вот можете спросить об этом, вам расскажет. Давайте, не стесняйтесь. 